Alrighty, welcome to the 269th episode of the Celtics Lab podcast, brought to you by Prize Picks, the exclusive fantasy basketball partner of the CLNS Media Network, and by Game Time Tickets, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I'm Cameron Tuptify, I'm your host, I'm joined by Dr. Justin Quinn, Alex Goldberg is down in Brooklyn moving, which I feel like he just did, but whatever, and <laughs> it doesn't matter, we're joined both uh, by my friend and yours, Jack Simone from How About Them Celtics, and he writes for like every other sports website of the planet. So how about them Celtics at all? Jack, what's up? Hello, hello. How are we doing? It's good. I'm um, so hot. We were at the Al Horford event today, Jack and I were, and it was a million bajillion degrees Fahrenheit out there. Um, Jack, I left before Al started serving chicken. What was that? What were the highlights from that? Oh, uh, not much. He just, he served the chicken. Uh, people came in. They only let like, 20 people in the door and so the rest of the people just kind of stood outside for context justin the line was around the block so there was like oh. easily what 300 people there at least i would say at least um <clears throat> i might be selling it short but he served some chicken uh he said hi to some people then he went outside on that little patio signed some autographs took a picture of the people talked to the people a little bit and then after that everyone kind of formed a line and whoever wanted to actually eat the chicken came in got their food and it was kind of like a madhouse in there but it was did good up, it was fun did you end up eating i did not because by the time that i ended up like ready to eat or like the event was over there was a giant line because everyone had like funneled in so it's just like all right i'll just i'll go home yeah that was maybe like 30 times the size i thought that event was going to be that was it's not honestly shout out to raising canes uh, not a sponsor but that was the most professional uh player meet and greet i've ever been a part of um, definitely by far anyways uh jack you're here to not gawk at raising canes um we're gonna think about what happens next for the Celtics, but first uh we'll put a wrap on kind of final stuff and there's actually news and actually there's breaking news because uh jack you formerly wrote for bulls wire and justin you currently write for bulls wire and nominally i write for bulls wire what do you guys think of the giddy caruso trade really quickly justin well, if we put some certain things on the shelf, I can see the fit on both sides. Uh, I don't know if we should put those things on the shelf as uh, certain allegations regarding Josh Giddy uh, being in the picture entirely out of the picture. But if we are just restricting it to basketball, uh, I, I do see the fit. Uh, I don't. I don't see what the attraction is. I mean, like. Yes, Lonzo Ball is not able to play, but they keep hyping him up. To me, this like signals gonna... they are like he's going to come back after two and a half years out. To me, this signals that they are believing in that a lot less than maybe they were uh, at the end of the regular season. Jack, any thoughts? I only ask because I found it so surprising. I think the Bulls organization needs to be disbanded. They are an embarrassment. Like, what are we doing? How, like, you have Kobe White, who just had a phenomenal season and most improved player season. You have Io Dasunmu, who averaged like 15 points on extremely efficient shooting for the second half of the season. He's promising. You're going to bring in a non shooting guard to a team that already has a bad offense. And reports are out there saying, oh, we declined a top 10 pick for Alex Russo. I'd rather have Stephon Castle than Josh Giddy. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have Rob Dillingham, Reed Shepard, Donovan Klingon. I could go down the list and name 15 guys in what is considered a worse year draft class that I'd rather have than Josh Giddy. Josh Giddy's a fine player, but he doesn't fit what they're doing at all. And it doesn't make any sense to trade somebody who you could have gotten multiple first four for the past two years for a guy who just couldn't get playoff minutes on one of the best teams in the Western conference after starting for them all year. Like this is, uh, it, it, it's an embarrassing organization at this point. Like it's, it's terrible. It's such a, it's such a fleecing from the thunder. It's such a good deal. The, the Reinsdorfs and the buses need to get a new, new hobby. Cause yes, they're, they're, they're ruining two iconic franchises. All right. Anyways, uh, uh, those are, those are more informed answers than I could have ever hoped for, but this is not the Bulls lab or the thunder lab podcast. Um, I do want to point out that A, I've had really bad Wi-Fi today. B, Jack is working on a story and might leave us at any moment to take a call. Um, and C, I wanted to plug liking and subscribing to our podcast at the top. So I'm going to use this moment to tell people to like and subscribe to our podcast, but also be flexible with us uh, because it might just be Justin talking to himself <laughs> at some point today. What, what, what else will be different than that? That's all I do all day. 
Uh, speaking of what's what else is different is my chair is being squeaky again. Anyways, um, Jack, I feel like I'm only now picking my head up and really thinking about the what this title means before we look ahead and before we do the rest of the news. Like, do you have any thoughts or like, like do wh what was your favorite part from Monday night? Before that, just quickly for the YouTube watchers, Cam, I enjoyed that your StreamYard tag still has not changed since the round table we did like three weeks ago. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Choice Blake Griffin when we well, talked about it. Because I'm, I'm using my work. Oh, it's computer. fantastic. I don't yeah. even know how to change it. I, I got to fire the producer for the show. I, I only noticed because I'm that's the one funny. who put it there for you. So <laughs> are you hosting this me? Right now? Uh, no, but yeah, I, I did it in our I round table. I could have noticed that I did not. I added that so the added viewers could see who all of our choices for the 15th roster spot were. Anyways, um, yeah, it's kind of weird because there's not really been time to like process what happened because it was that. And then at least for me, the next day, I mean, I was at the garden till like 530 and then I, I slept till like two. And so I didn't really like get a normal next day. Uh, I did work. I did podcast. And then the next day I golfed and then did another podcast and did more work. Then today was the El Horford event. Then tomorrow's the parade. So there's not really like a break for anything. But it was just like. It was just super fun. Like it was just a super cool night, so super fun. cool experience to be a part of. Um, watching the sort of emotions flow out from Tatum and Brown, especially, was was fun for me because those guys don't really show that much. Um, seeing Al Horford and his son on the bench with Derek White share that moment was super fun. Share, all, seeing all of them embrace their families in the moment was cool. I just it was like it, it almost felt inevitable when they swept the Pacers. At least in my opinion, I didn't think the Mavericks were a very good team, and I still yeah, don't. Neither. Um, but like to see it come to fruition was 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 special, and so I was I was happy to be in the building. I was happy to see it, and it was uh, it was just super fun. Yeah, what time did you say you got home? I left at five thirty as Jason Tatum yeah. was talking to security, and I saw him on my way out. Oh, you and did. Then, that's uh, funny. I didn't like say anything, but I like saw I saw someone in the car, and I was like, "Wait a second, is that?" And then I turned around, and Jason Tatum was like walking in. I don't know if he forgot something or whatever, but he was like talking to this like at at the media entrance. He was just like talking to security. Um, yeah, that's funny. I didn't get home party, until like six thirty. The party was downstairs at it was called Big Night Live. Sorry, I'm fussing yeah. my hair. Um, to the players and like the staff just kept coming back to the to the mm -hmm. floor, which we we've talked about before. Um, yeah, I got home. I like I got home. I think at like five thirty or six, and I it was so full of adrenaline. I wrote three articles. Um, I <laughs> I like got to. I think I got the first Van Gundy story out because I was just like up. Um, yeah, it was super exhilarating. Justin, thanks for being flexible with how we got content out that night. Because oh, I mean, what choice do we have? It's that's the thing. first time in sixteen years. It's not like it's an everyday yeah. experience. Yeah, we're not practiced that. Even if it used to be. Yeah. No, it was super special. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm only just starting now that I'm like seeing people who aren't Celtics reporters, like in my real life, starting to piece together. Like, oh yeah, like a, a team in the city won the title. That's a lot of fun. That's fun for everyone. Um, I hear y'all canceled school. Yeah, that's ins that's staggering. Boston Public Schools was supposed to have their last day of school Friday, and the superintendent uh, just decided to cancel the day straight up because they're saying it would just been a traffic nightmare, which I suppose is probably true, but whatever. Um, it also probably like you're not going to do any work that day anyway. So no, like, like what, what is one less? You know what I'm saying? So I guess it's yeah. just a cool thing. It's interesting. Students in Massachusetts are legally. Uh, allowed a certain number of hours is actually not the number of days, it's the number of hours of instruction, which is why a lot of schools let seniors out a day or two early. And so, probably like next year's rising seniors are just gonna have an extra day tacked on and no one's gonna say anything about it, but whatever. Okay, <laughs> um, let's talk about the news. Uh, actually, I just talked about it, so we can talk about it some more. Van Gundy is going to be the lead assistant uh, for the Clippers. Jack, are you shocked? <laughs> Um, I don't know if shocked is the right word. Like I didn't see it coming, but it makes sense in hindsight. So I don't think I'm necessarily like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Like it, it felt like you wanted to be back in the basketball space and he got that opportunity to do it with a really great team, helping in a very unique role. But once you're a coach for that long and you get back in the space of basketball, I feel like you kind of get the itch naturally. And so to see him make that jump, like I wouldn't be surprised in the next three years that he's a head coach again. So it does make sense for him to be like in this role with the Clippers. I think How about you, Justin. I'm not surprised for the same reasons. I am more surprised that uh, Sam Cassell is still, at least for now, a Celtics assistant coach. I, I really expected him, maybe probably before anyone, to be hired. They should pay, pay Sam Cassell whatever he wants because 
this team was so robotic and that was so important, but Sam Cassell was not. Like Jack, I'm sure you can attest the person having the most fun pregame every game of the season was Sam Cassell. And I think it was really important for the for this the Celtics team to be that buttoned up. Like they needed to kind of shut out the rest of the world, but that's exhausting. So you also need a little bit of levity and Sam Cassell is a funny dude and he was being a funny dude so consistently. Um yeah, Van Gundy, he he's worked with Ty Lu. He wasn't gonna work for a rebuilding team, so that's a good situation for him. Um, and yeah, Sam Cassell, just to your point, he's on the, if you look at uh, websites that predict these sorts of things, um, he's always high on the list, but not the highest. And it's he's kind of retreated. So I wonder if the consensus is he's not going to um, become a head coach. But if you think you can future cast the NBA better than that, that, why don't I tell you about our friends over at Prize Picks? Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy app with over 5 million active members. It is the easiest and most excited way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. Get in on the daily action with your friends. Become part of the Prize Picks community today. All you do is pick more or less on two to six players, their stat projections, and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You could turn $10 into $1,000. Prize Picks is available in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Now, here's something that you can think about. What you can think about here with Prize Picks, here, here's an example of something you could. Or the, this is the whole idea behind the concept. Caitlin Clark for more than three and a half three pointers made, and Brianna Stewart for more than 23 points. See, it's that simple. Download the Prize Picks app today and use the code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code CLNS on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, back to the show. I don't know if you could hear me during that ad read. Uh, yeah, the chair is out of control. I'm so full of adrenaline this week. I haven't slept like more than two or three hours a night just because this has been such so exciting. Um, okay, let's go back to the show. What was I supposed to ask you next, Jack? This is fun. Uh, speaking of being too buttoned up, this is more fun. Uh, oh, O'Shea, Br birthday boy, O'Shea Brissett is playing for Team Canada. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty stacked team. What's your level of interest for the Olympics this summer, Jack? Are you sick of basketball or are you excited? I am excited that there will be something to do in August. That is what I'm excited about because you've got the draft now, summer league in July, August, pretty dead period, but we got the Olympics. I'm moving in September and then October training start camp starts again. So I'll be pretty busy all summer. So I'm very excited. There's stuff to fill the gaps, but uh, team Canada is really good. They have a really, really, yeah. really good roster. Probably the best roster they've ever managed to, uh, to field uh, managed to field. I should say um, team USA is still very clearly better if i if i ha even have to say that uh super pumped that Derek white even might make that team tatum and drew holiday already uh, are obviously on it bit weird that there's three Celtics that could potentially be on the team and jalen brown isn't one of them but it does make sense that you'd want a Derek white type player on the team i wrote about it for um who did i write about it for i think I, like, I, mean, you tend to say, yeah, I know i know i know I, I wrote it for eight points nine seconds which is fan side is pacer site i wrote something along the lines of like let me see tyrese halliburton team usa olympics like three players that can make team USA uh, who could beat out Tyrese Halliburton for the 2024 Olympics. The first one was De'Aaron Fox who wrong. Second one was Derek white. Third one was Drew holiday. So if I go two for three, I'm going to be pretty happy, even though Tyrese Halliburton also made the team, but you get the point that I yeah. can pick the others. Wait, can I ask that question? Maybe one of you knows when does um, camp start for team USA? Cause that, cause Tatum and Drew and maybe Derek aren't going to have much of an off season. It's gonna be this. like they go to Vegas in July, know. right? Isn't I'm on their I'm on their mailing list. I, I didn't read it. I'm bad. Um, I don't but you know what I'm saying? Like, know. it's not they're not gonna have a month off between now and when they go to France. It's gonna be like ten no. days, maybe. It'll be very It'll be after the draft, but not much. <laughs> Training camp begins. This can't be right. Uh, okay, it says nope. That's U18. And I was gonna say May 23rd is obscene. Um. I don't know. Let's see. July. This is great. 
I'm glad we're, I know. we're not even streaming live. This is <laughs> live to tape. So USA <laughs> basketball announced today the national team, which will compete, is set for July 26th to August 11th. Okay, let's call Does it. it say anything about training camp? Training camp uh, will commence on July 6th. So, yeah. Holy fuck, holy. Right. So, there um, you go. Speaking of which, just NBA 2K tweeted, like, what's next for Tatum I emoji? And then Tatum tweeted, like, also I emoji or something. And uh, Ronnie 2K is a friend of the show, and I hope that uh, he's thinking of us if Jason Tatum is going to be the cover athlete for 2K. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that right now. I, I sincerely don't know what's happening next, but I, I'm hoping that I get get my hands dirty with that one. Lots of copycatting is going to be next around the league. What the Boston did, like any championship team does, you're going to see a lot of people try to do the same thing. Yeah. I mean, that's respectfully, Justin, load up on talent is, is a good idea. They should have already been doing that. Well, I brought that up because, you know, you could always take your star and have them change trainers. Oh. Like Giannis, uh, potentially being implied by Roland or Shelburne. Uh, now you know where I'm going with that. Oh, that's why Drew Hanlon was in Greece. I talked to him about it. I was like, how was Greece? He was like, well, you know, it was a lot. And I was like, yeah, I guess vacationing can be kind of work. I didn't even think she about it. She didn't say it was him, but who else would it be? Yeah, and Drew Hanlon was just in Greece. It's Giannis. Yeah, it's Giannis, 100%. And Giannis is in Greece right now, uh, as evidenced by the photos he posted today. Ah, I didn't know what you were talking about. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, we have one okay, more thing. Okay, I'm being pretty oblique, to be fair. Um, well, how's this for a pivot? Not an oblique, but a uh, fascia of the foot. Chris Tapps Porzingis is going to need surgery, we think. Uh, Bontemps said it on the Hoop Collective immediately after. He said that Porzingis said to him he needs surgery. We also have since learned that Porzingis overrode the medical staff. Um, I don't love that. Like well, He wasn't. That good in game five. Track record in Boston, and I'm not even going to finish that sentence. Yeah, Jack. Uh, any thoughts on Porzingis checking himself into game five, basically, or surgery to come? I mean, I said a few weeks ago, I think he's he's going to be out till Christmas, and now who knows? Three but... months from the surgery, right? So hmm. if he had it soon, he could be ready for camp. Theoretically, I Theoretically. I mean, I have no problem with him checking in for game five of the NBA Finals, but like. For for as great as the Celtics are, and as I personally think likely it is that they could be back there next year, you, you don't know. Like there is no knowing yeah. the, when your next chance to play in a closeout game of an NBA championship is, and they won. So I don't think he's going to regret that at all. Um, and even if they had lost and he checked himself back into Game Six and they won that, like I, I don't think he'll regret playing in the game where they ultimately won an NBA championship. I don't. I'm not surprised at the surgery. Like it seemed pretty bad for, I mean, Xavier Tillman gave an answer at practice a couple of days prior and said, you like, yeah, dudes in pain constantly. Like he, he doesn't feel very good right now. So it makes sense that he's going to have the surgery. This is kind of what you signed up for when you trade for a guy like Christoph Porzingis, who they made into this super effective, you know, play his role to perfection, most efficient post player in the league, dominant player when he's on the court, he's going to get hurt. And that's kind of what you have to live with. I fielded like, I forget where I was asked this or, or who asked me this. Someone was like, do you think they'll trade Porzingis now? I was like, I don't think so. I don't I think might have said that. that. <laughs> uh, was it you? Why? I don't think it was you. I think I was. I, I think it's, it it's going to be like a, a nice maybe down the road, but not next season. This yeah. No, like I don't hot think take of like, Hey, they didn't need him. Why wouldn't they trade him? Oh, they needed him. <laughs> Uh, you don't you don't have a top seed without him. I don't it think. also goes to the effect of like Keith Smith says this all the time. Like if you're trading because he's hurt, why would another team trade for him? Because he's hurt. Like that does that, that, that logic doesn't track either. So I, I don't think Borzingis is going anywhere. I don't think anybody in the Celtics top eight, nine rotation is going to go anywhere next year. Like the first guy in the roster you look at and say, hmm, maybe he's not back is Luke Cornett. And I even think they'll bring him. That's back. exactly oh. what I just said on that show we were on before this one came in. Exactly. All right, well, let's um slower roll because that's really the meat and potatoes of the podcast. And before that, I want to talk about our friends over at Game Time Tickets. Let's pause the action and talk about our friends over at GameTime.co. And then we will preview what's to come next. The NBA playoffs are heating up. Wouldn't it be great to be there live? The energy, the buzzer beaters, the chance to see the best players in the world battle it out. The Geno time. Well, getting tickets doesn't have to be a hassle, especially when you use the Game Time app like I do. That's GameTime.co. It's the best way to see your favorite sports live. 
I use game time whenever I want to go to Fenway Park, catch the Red Sox, or when I'm headed into town for a concert. There's no more wondering about what I pay for tickets. And guess what? Game time guarantees the lowest price. If you find a cheaper ticket, they'll credit you 110% of the difference. So ditch the ticket stress and download the game time app today. Download the game time app, create an account and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right. I sort of implied something that I should have, but whatever. Okay. So we started to talk about this and I made you pause, but let's get right back into it. The off season has begun. There's already been a trade. There's already coaches hired. I mean, we're going to a parade tomorrow, but uh, rest of the NBA is already looking ahead towards next season. And I'm sure the Celtics front office in some capacity already has, if not quite a lot. So, um, yeah, they'll they'll celebrate this summer. They'll have private exit interviews, yada yada. But when's the draft? Thursday, Wednesday, twenty sixth. So and twenty seventh. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, they do it two days now. I don't know how. Are you going to go to both, them. Jack? Are you going to go to Auerbach for both? I have nothing better to do with my life, so absolutely I'll be at both. <laughs> this is what I do. I don't want to go to both. I hate the. I don't care about the draft. Um, Jack cares about the draft. He, during game five, was writing about the draft. So, Jack, um, what are some of the names? I, I mean, steer people towards the articles that you've written, but give mm-hmm. us a name or two to look at. I need to asterisks i am the furthest thing from an expert i just know the names i read the well, scouting reports attitude. i have not i have not watched a ton of film nothing like that I've, any really because i've been so focused on the celtics but i've written a mock draft for swarm and sting which is the hornets fan set site and wiz of oz which is wizards uh and in both of them do you want celtics names or like top names what do you what's the question celtics names just celtics names two um two okay two Ooh, buddy, uh, I, got one for you, but I don't know about two I like Deron Holmes. I think he probably ends up going before the Celtics pick, but he, there was a rumor that came out that he was like, quote unquote, promised like a team said, Oh, you won't make it past us, which is why I don't think he'll get to 30. Um, But I like his game a lot. Uh, He's like a versatile athletic big out of Dayton and he shot pretty well last year, which could be signs of improvement, which is like good thing. Um, So I'll go big with that one and I'll go Baylor Shireman out of Creighton for my other one. Because if Sam Hauser leaves next year because he's too much money, he should probably start developing another bigger shooter. Now he's like 6'6", can shoot the ball. And he's a college vet. He's like spent four years in college, I think maybe five. So those those are the two names. There's some others, but those are the two that stand out to me, even though I don't think Holmes will get to the Celtics. Do we have any expectation that a rookie will play next year? Or is it like maybe Jordan Walsh cracks the rotation no. and someone takes Jordan? Jordan won't be a rookie anymore. And uh, yeah, no. I want to say also Igodaro. If they if they do the trade back thing again, he's a really interesting Al Horford-ish clone. He's not a good of a shooter. Uh, he His game is a little bit more mobile than Al's was early in his career. Uh, I don't think people set Al Horford to take expectations very clearly. But if Boston doesn't get either of those guys that Jack was just talking about, Shireman in particular stands out to me as a really interesting prospect. That's what I would do. Or, okay. Um, go find Jack's content and uh, like and subscribe to this podcast because maybe we will be podcasting about the draft very soon. Uh, speaking of very soon, I suspect when can Jason Tatum legally sign his extension? Does anyone know? I know it's next week. Um, they, can, they can verbally confirm to it now. Yeah, yeah. but they can't. So as soon as, uh, I don't know, early July, Tatum will officially sign something like a five-year, $315 million contract extension. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't think anyone with a head on their shoulders thinks that that's not going to happen. So... Really, the question. I want to say July first is the usual date that the league year turns over, and so that's when they do the signing. But that could just be my. You guys want to know something funny? Uh, My phone just prompted me to check into my flight home from Dallas because we would be podcasting (laughs) about Game Six if the series had gone longer. Uh, Jalen Brown. When was his event? This is great podcasting. We're just like googling things for each other as we go. He didn't have his event till late august i mean late july so jason's i mean jack and i were talking about this yeah jack i think this event might not happen in boston 
So let me back up. Jalen Brown signed his extension last year. It was in Boston, specifically at MIT. He was hosting a camp for uh, kids from the city doing STEM or STEAM stuff. Uh, when we were in Dallas for games three and four, when I was there for game four anyways, we were talking about where Jason would have his press conference. And I said, I don't think it'll be in Boston because he'll be in St. Louis, he'll be on vacation, or he'll be doing Team USA stuff. And now that they have training camp July 6th, Jack, do you feel like it's even more likely that he's not going to have an extension press conference in Boston? Uh, I still think it would be in Boston, if only because, like, there's not going to be press if it's not in Boston. Like, no one's going to go out. Uh, maybe they do a Zoom. That could be a possible too, but it's a little bit awkward. Um, I still would bet it being Zoom or at the Arbeck Center or somewhere in Boston. It wouldn't surprise me if the timeline goes something like parade, 10 day vacation, back here for the second, then fly out to Vegas. Like, get your stuff from here, come settle down for two, or not even settle down, just like grab new stuff for Vegas and then leave for Vegas from here. Sweet. Did we ever get an explanation, both of you, on why the Celtics chose to go to Miami? Because bars close at 2 a.m. in Boston. Well, I mean, I know that's the obvious part, but I just wondered if there was any other reasons maybe that someone should Uh, And not everyone went. Horford stayed at home. Yeah, Miami, more agreeable weather right now because there's a big heat wave in Boston. The middle of the week, so bars, there's not that many bars open. Um, Yeah, I I, would have done the same thing. Uh, oh, maybe there's like a chesty, let's bring it down to where the heat play, but I don't think so. That's why I was wondering if maybe there was some little thing like, ha ha, well, we got you back, ha ha ha, or some weird crap like that. I don't think I don't so, but I, I kind of hope. Um, Justin, uh, let's pick up our pace because you told me to. Um, what's the latest <laughs> for Derek White's extension, you think, Justin? Uh, if they don't give him everything they possibly could, then he's going to want to hit free agency. He might anyway, and I would not expect a damn thing less from him. So, yeah. Um, and Hollinger has him at, what is it, 31 a year-ish for four years? Oh, don't ask me to do math. Uh, or for 127 is what we have in our notes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Asking I think... Justin's the, divide is a recipe for disaster. Um, I think he signs it, and I think the Celtics offer it. I don't see them feeling cheap and stingy right now. And oh, I don't think, no, 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 no. I mean, uh, he did just enough kind of regressing to the mean during the regular season and the playoffs that he doesn't have all of both of his legs to stand on, but I think both sides are going to patch up a deal. Um, Jack, what do you think of the possibility of a Hauser extension coming down the pipe? I don't know. It feels, I don't think it's exactly the same as the Grant one, because I do think there was also a little bit of personality clash going on there, and they hadn't won yet, and so maybe it's different now because they've won. And also you've seen the signs of what can go wrong when you don't bring back your guys in the Nuggets, who didn't bring back a couple of rotation players, although probably not quite as important as Sam Hauser. Um, I don't know the team. I would need to look at like, what team is going to have cap space next summer um, <clears throat> that could potentially want to bring him in um, because that that's really where the problem is going to be. Like you look at projected cap space next summer. Um, it's like the Pistons, the Rockets could maybe Pelicans, maybe magic, but this is all like theoretical, like before extensions come in. So this is, this even isn't like a, a realistic thing, but there's going to be teams out there that need his skill set. He can defend that at a good enough level where his shooting is like the perfect mix of everything you want in a role player. Um, I think at the very least, other teams offer their ML, full MLE non-taxpayer, which is going to yeah. clock in, a, I think, next year, like a little above $13 because it's at 13 right now. Or actually, that might actually even spike up. Like 13 um, or something, yeah. Yeah. Um, but with the new money coming in, I think that could end up, spiking next year i don't exactly know how it works i always go to spot track to check my uh Good spot everything um yeah. but it is yeah it's spiked so this year is a little under 13 mil next year it's going to be 14.2 so it's a, it's a pretty significant jump for the uh, non-taxpayer mle um and i think a team's going to offer him that without blinking the question is whether wick Grossbeck and celtics ownership want to go that deep for sam hauser and pay him 50 mil a season as my good friend sam lafrance the how about them celtics podcast says not my money so I say bring him back, but 
it, it there is more that goes into it where it's like can you develop like a Baylor Shireman on a cheaper deal can Jordan Walsh start shooting all right Drew can Peterson. Drew Peterson turn into anything like if you can get any of those guys to pop and have them on a significantly cheaper salary for the next X amount of years you can probably get by without paying him that much and I'm not gonna like I, as much as it's not my money I do understand the fact that you're not really paying 14 mil you're paying like 30 million a season for that with taxes and stuff so I don't know I'd say like 20% chance but so I think it's higher than that and it's only because in that Hollinger piece that we were referencing earlier where some of that information we have on our rundown came from he seems to be talking about the situation where the Celtics front office appears to want to extend him and there is talk about uh, extending him for years and less dollars uh, that would be made possible by and don't ask me how because I am not the right person to ask for this, uh, by declining the player option in the last uh, year of his current deal, they would then be able to extend him for longer, which doesn't make sense to me, but sure, whatever. Uh, Hollinger knows what he's talking about in this regard, and I do not, so I believe him. I guess the only thing that I would add to this conversation is next year is going <laughs> to, we're all going to have to be patient as we and the teams figure out just what the new CBA landscape looks like. And if, you know, the Celtics let Hauser walk or they trade him for financial reasons, every, all 29 teams are going to be doing shrewd things because of the math, not because they're being cheap or they don't like your favorite player. Um, so Hauser could just be a CBA casualty. Um, nothing more, nothing less. I think it's going to be, we mentioned him earlier, Cornette. Yeah, just quickly. Um, Jack, Cornette, Tillman, Keita, and Sfi are all free agents. Any one of those you think Boston should be bending over backwards to re-sign? The only reason I don't know if Cornette would be that casualty is because I think he's the type of player that not a lot of other teams would probably be jumping to give a ton of money to. And so if the Celtics can sign him back for a minimum, they're going to sign him back for oh, a minimum. Absolutely. They love him. I think he's going to get a little bit more than that, though. I, I think he could. There's a chance. I just don't know which team would do it this summer. Um my favorite of the bunch is Tillman. I think Tillman rocks. I think he's an extremely versatile defender. I think I'm a believer in the three-point shooting, much to first to the floors, Jake Eisenberg's dismay, who is not as a big of a believer. We have a little side bit going. We, we have never going to be Al, but it'll be no. good. Our side bit is if he makes 38% on at least 100 attempts next year, we have 100 bucks on that, and I say I think Ooh. he can do it. Um, I think he'll be – I think he's a good shooter. The form is there. And then on top of that, the defense and just personally, like I've had a couple conversations with him, the nicest human being you'll ever meet in your life. So I'm a bit biased, but Xavier Tillman is awesome. Tillman's cool. Uh, or excuse me. Kate is cool. I think he's a fine player. I think he could develop into some, uh, he's a sick athlete. He's a nice guy too. I've talked to him. Cornette's also just amazing. Like they're all good people. That's the best part about the Celtics team. I like Tillman's game the best in terms of fitting. And outside of the fact that he looks like Al Horford, I think they have very similar games. And so I think that's the perfect replacement. Well, I the wrinkle to that is he, he, he has a bunch of kids. He looks grizzled. He's only 25. Like when I talk to him, Jack, I don't know about you. I'm, I think I'm talking to someone older than me. And then I have to be like, oh, actually, no, he's, Definitely. he's a pretty young man. <laughs> um, and so the, the, that's another reason to keep him around is it's not like, you know, he's a vet who really only has 18 more months of playing at that level. It's, why couldn't he get better? If we're if we're allowed to say, oh, poor Luca, he's not ready, he's gonna get better, which yeah, I did for the Jays totally. for three years, um, then we can do that for Tillman. Why can't we do that for Tillman? Um, alrighty, uh, we didn't quite look so far ahead into our crystal ball, um, but I guess we can save that then. So Jack, uh, I'm gonna do post roll and cut you loose, and Justin, you too. But the final question will be, just make one spicy Celtics prediction for next season. So let me do post roll. While you think of that, this episode of the Celtics Podcast was brought to you by Prize Picks, the exclusive fantasy basketball partner of the CNS Media Network, and by Game Time Tickets, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. If you enjoyed this podcast, check out the How About Them Celtics podcast, the First of the Floor podcast, and the many other New England sports podcasts available on the CNS Media Network. We've been talking to my friend Jack Simone from How About Them Celtics, from Fansided, from Celtics Blog, from all sorts of websites I've never even heard of. Um, okay. Oh, and Justin and Cameron are here too. Jack, what is something big, spicy, and bold that you would like to uh, 
predict for next year? Mm. Gosh, I don't know. I don't know how spicy you can get. Like, is saying I think they have like a real chance to go back to back spicy. That doesn't even seem spicy. Just point. say it in a spicy way. A good basketball. Pretend, team. Like, pretend like this I'm, is talk radio. But like, I'm trying to think of something creative though. Like, I think, I don't know. I think Drew Holiday could finish like top three in defensive player of the year voting again after what he just did. Fun. Is that spicy? Does that count? I think. Uh, I like it. I think. Jalen Brown could start the All Star game next year. I think Jalen Brown could well, be like I don't know. Justin. Pick one. Yeah. Just pick one. I'm, I'm sure. I'll go. I'll go the Drew Holiday thing. I think he could finish top three. I think people are going to recognize the value after leading a second team to a championship. I think it's going to be an awesome defense again. And I think with Chris stops out, it's going to really come to the forefront how much he does. Sweet, Justin. Jalen Brown is going to come in second overall in the 2025 Most Valuable Player race. What the hell? Is that spicy? That's the craziest. I mean, he's like hundred to one odds right now. That's hey, if you're if you're rocking with Justin, um, holy crap, cool. But let's just put let's just pin that for for now. Second, uh, my dude. Second. Yeah, t- I mean, first. well, I don't think Tate. I think Tatum's gonna be super tired because they didn't ask so me for that. But, yeah. Um. Okay. Mine is that next season is not Al Horford's last season in the NBA. Um, Ooh, I like it. Interesting. Big chief vibes. I mean, he didn't look like a guy that only has eighty to a hundred more games to give. Yeah. He looked like a guy who. Uh, so, we'll see. Uh, and on that note, um, enjoy the parade safely if you can, um, and follow me and Jack and on Twitter for live looks. I don't know where we'll be. Uh, I've got something special that I think Jack knows about. Um, but otherwise, also follow Justin for his takes from afar. And until then, uh, like and subscribe, and we'll catch you later. Adios. Let me uh, share a little bit of parting wisdom uh, learned here in Mexico for you parade goers. The shortest Hydrate. path in a heat wave is wherever there's shade. Oh. Yeah. It's 20 yeah, degrees cooler in the shade, they say. So, I mean, actually, at the Horford event, I crossed the street just to get a different camera angle, and it was in the shade, and it, it felt wonderful. So, yeah. Bring an umbrella, not necessarily for the rain. Yeah. Uh, wear sunscreen, find some shade, drink some water, and follow me and Jack on Twitter. <laughs> How's that? Okay. Uh, I like that. I like that. The camp counselor in me loves that. Okay. Uh, Until next time, thanks for listening. We'll catch you later. Bye.